Whether you're nonprofit, for profit, you need to deliver the best product that you can. Welcome to The Poor, a place where faith and culture are served together. My name is Father Christian here as your host, and today we are gonna be jumping into the culture of giving and of charity. Why and how should we fund it? In order for that to happen, we brought in a, the Director of Finance, Mr. Tom Keep It Fresh Winter. That's me. Welcome to the show. I'm happy to be here. Usually I'm behind the scenes with you. I'm a little uncomfortable to be in front of the camera, but I'm okay. But you did it because you have a hot take. And before we get to the hot take, take, as you guys know, the way we start out every show is that you get a drink. This is Palm Wonderful, which I heard is a little bitter, but it's full of antioxidants. So what you have done, at least for the church, you have brought in a bit of bitterness that became like an antioxidant, though, that really helped the church become more sustainable. Yeah, yeah I've never heard it described like that, but it yeah. does make sense. Here we go. Cheers. That's pretty good. That's yeah. good. That's better. You remember when we had uh, kabucha? When we first met, yes, I was in the bathroom for an hour after that lunch. Before we get into all your hot take here, your first name is Tom. You're named after the Doubting Thomas. Well, yeah, maybe, or my uncle would claim I'm named after him. But the story is, I was born on the first day of winter, December yes. 21st. Yeah. Also happened to be the Feast of St. Thomas that day. There was a divine yeah. hand on you. Your name is Tom Winter. That's the same day as the day the church celebrates the Apostle Thomas. Right and also the winter solstice. They're yeah, amazing. So you're like a little bit of like the church stuff, but also sort of like the, the hippy dippy solstice stuff. Yeah, you could put it that way. You, you got a business mindset, but then you also got this artistic creative yeah. side. Yeah, I'm a little nuts like you. That's why you and I get along so well. That's true. Yeah. Thomas was doubting Thomas. Do you have doubts? No, I like to think more critically than doubtfully. What's the biggest doubt you have with the church? Oh boy, that's a good, that's a tough one. I don't know. We'll come back to that. Got him. Are you now doubting your commitment to this interview? No, I know what I'm getting into with you. So you're a financial director. Your, yeah. your job is to help keep the church solvent and stable financially. Right. You came into a church that was growing and then you came in with your big old MBA and you're starting a businesses and being an entrepreneur and you said, hold up guys, the way we're looking at this is not sustainable. If there's no money, there's no mission, like I like to say, which isn't always very popular, but it's true. This operation, this church, takes a tremendous amount of money to operate. That needs to be kept in mind always. Right? We have salaries, we have overhead, we have facilities. Uh, it takes a lot of dough. And we don't make widgets. We don't sell ice cream. We have kind of an intangible, right? We offer Jesus, spirituality, church. That's a, it's a mindset that's different. This is, a church is unlike any other business I've come across. Because? The way we generate revenue. How many businesses do you know that people donate money? If folks don't feel good about the work that you, we do here, they're not gonna give, they're not gonna support. So we need to make sure we're being good stewards of that money and provide a value for what the folks are looking for here at St. Mary's. So the value would come through as if their lives are being changed. Right. That's kind of the product, I right. say it that way. Yep. You start to notice a pattern though that we, uh, in charity, start to become dependent upon handouts. Yeah, you take them for granted, you become dependent upon them, and then before you know it, you're getting a little loose. And you're not offering up your and you're not holding up your end of the bargain. So we have to hold up our end of the arrangement too, and that's to offer a good product or service here. So I'm you know, more business-minded, so my terms are less spiritual than yours. So. We have a lot of space on this campus that we rent out. A lot of times that space is just kind of given freely mm. or the rates would change. Right. You were saying, we need to look at the numbers, what does it cost to run this place, and we have to charge. And we right. like, no, Tom, right. you can't charge right. these people. He's like, well then, we're gonna be losing money and we no money, no mission. The first chapter of the book called Modern Church Economics is leverage your assets. And that's one of our big assets here beyond the people is our campus. And we need to rent that out and generate a little bit of money from that rental to help support our overall operation. So I wonder if, does it help, do you think, people within charity or also within the church to think about how, <laughs> how good is the product that we're offering? 
Right. What we're all doing is we're all selling Jesus. I, I, listen, this is going to be, these terms are really hard to, to, to play around with. But I'm just wondering, because you have so many churches that are underwater, right. and then the, the sustainability of it is tough. And I just wonder if it's because they maybe don't have their hands wrapped around exactly what they're offering. What am I giving to you that you would want to give 10% of your income Absolutely. To? I think that's absolutely true. I think St. Mary's and the work we do here, we're outliers. I think we do an exceptional job at church. I was talking to someone recently that left St. Mary's, moved away, and he's having trouble finding a church that he likes. And he goes, boy, I really appreciate St. Mary's now that I'm not part of your community anymore and I'm struggling to find a church that fulfills me. So I think, especially because the business of church is so tough that the game has to be stepped up. And so yeah. sometimes I think the other part of the charity mindset is just good enough. Do whatever you can. Yeah. You got the volunteers, and I understand it because a lot of people are just overloaded. They don't have all the volunteers there. Um, however, I would say, you know, can you cut back so you can at least do the one thing really well and so you're offering a really good product? Because I think, do you think there's a culture sometimes in charity that it's just like, yeah, Yeah, it's not just, profit. Just, just, just get it across whatever. the finish line. Yeah. Whether you're nonprofit, for profit, you need to deliver the best product that you can. In our case, with production, which I'm, you and I are heavily involved in, Production is part of the overall experience here for folks. And if the production is lackluster, that becomes a distraction from the message that you're trying to deliver. That's why you can see the production is so high that I bought this at Walgreens today. Coming from the business world, the big change, stepping into here, you're an entrepreneur. Why have you found it so enjoyable to stay here? Well, I really don't find it enjoyable at all. <laughs> it is great to be part of something bigger than myself. Right? My own business is myself, the work I do. But St. Mary's in this community is part of something greater. And my contribution to that piece, that overall operation that we call St. Mary's, is, is great. It's very fulfilling. It's a community where people come together. They gather. Sunday worship is very fulfilling for me to see the room packed. Right? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. great yeah. when you walk yeah. in there and you see 200 faces looking at you? Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's exciting. Uh, by the end of the service, we only have a handful left, but uh, I'm just kidding. It is a they very, hear the sermon and then yeah, they run. They leave. Because yeah. we don't have that many things that are really great in our lives, right? We have our family. We have our <laughs> friends. I'm sorry. I sound like my uncle. Let me restate that. There's a few things in life that give us joy. There's things that give us angst and anxiety and distress. So it is nice to gather around something like this that is just strong and positive. When people come to St. Mary's, it's a high for most people. Yes. So I'm contributing to that. You're contributing to that. If we go back to what we were saying before, that part of that product is you're inviting people into something that's much bigger than themselves. There's not too many places sometimes where you feel that, that you're part of a really big movement that's happening. Right. And it reminds me of uh, that, that book, Toxic Charity, is just how much are we, are we thinking of this as a, as a for-profit model where there is accountability, there is sustainability in it, and we make sure that we're producing a good product and knowing exactly what that product is and, and do it well. I mean, each church, yes, our product is Jesus right. if, it's, it's, if it's a church or every charity does, but what is that one product you do and do it very, very well, even if you have to slim down the right. other thing. And we've talked about that many times when we think through our programming, right? That if we can't do it great, let's just not do it at all. We're re re visit it at a later time if we need to. Sure. But we've ca carved out a lot of things over the years that just were just kind of lukewarm. And was there tension in that? Oh, always. Always. And what was that like for you to be making some put some lines in the ground saying, no, we, you, this ministry has to be sustainable, you have to be able to pay for this, or you have to charge for this? Uh, how did that go It has over? to be. It, it's always like sandpaper because people it's don't like to mix stick. the money with the church. Yes. But it's a reality. And that if you have a, a ministry area that consistently loses money, okay, well, that's one thing. But now you add another few ministries that lose money, and all of a sudden you've got a problem. There are certain ministries that are designed to lose money, mm -hmm. outreach, helping people in need. Mm -hmm. But there are some that you can actually make some money on that we can apply towards other things. So you, you, have, to, you have to be very balanced with, with the missions and, and think through whether it's effective monetarily, effective, programmatically, spiritually, and, and checks all the boxes that we needed to. Yeah. A lot of things we did in the past did not pass that test, so we just jettisoned it. Where will the church be in 25 years? Hopefully it's still here. 
and uh, thriving. Comes back around as a source of inspiration in people's lives. Today it's diluted. There's so much competition for people's attention, especially on Sunday, Yeah. right? Sports, events. So I'm hopeful that society will come back around and see the real value and there'll be a revitalization. Let's do some rapid fire, okay. buddy. You ready for this? Yeah. Best thing about the church? Oh, the people. The worst thing about the church? The people. Traditional choir or rock band? Well, I think we put the two of them together. Would you rather have a really good long sermon or a rough but short sermon? Probably a, a really good long sermon. Wow, <laughs> that was yeah. a tough one, huh? Yeah. Who would make a better church band, uh, the Beatles or Elvis? Elvis. Why? Kind of like Jesus. Okay. All right, everyone, thank you for another episode of The Poor, for being here with us. We'll have another sip, but God bless you all. Please subscribe to the channel, like and share this video with others as we are always bringing on different leaders, whether it's in, in the church or outside the church, to discuss where does faith and culture collide. We'll see you in the next one. Love you, man. Love you too. Bye-bye. Ciao.